So we want to do this one on the problem of good and evil. From a bioethics evolutionary standpoint, you look at the closest cousins of the human being, chimpanzees and bonobos. In bonobos, you see a lot of cooperative behavior. In chimpanzees, you also see cooperative behavior, but you also see intelligence. And there's the sense of a species that's capable of systemic planned violence. For example, one troop will wage a systematic war against another troop. So all of the evolutionary origins of human behavior aside, why is there war? Why is there murder? Why is there uh, people committing mayhem, rape, all this bad stuff? Over time, from an evolutionary standpoint, this, it has to be a long distance, assuming humans survive that long. Over time, humans are actually going to progress in theory, because if you look at what civilization is doing, it sort of, it does put a new selection pressure. The reason why you look at the majority of people aren't going around killing, raping, committing mayhem, it's because society tends to weed out certain persons over time. Generally, the more pro-social individual organisms, they tend to, in a blunt sense, be more successful evolutionary. They tend to have, they tend to produce more children and it's, it requires pro-social behavior to form human bonds, human relationships. So over time, more of the anti-social traits tend to be weeded out simply from the natural selection process. So civilization puts pressure towards more pro-social behavior, which in turn creates more cooperation in the society. But on an individual level, from a science perspective, we don't believe in good and evil in a cosmic term. So a, civil, a society can deal with the problem of aberrant behavior simply by imposing laws. There's a criminal law. People don't really need to, we don't think people need to believe in religious punishments or like eternity, this kind of concept in order for good, a functional society. And you look at all the stuff that's happening, you know, in, in the United States, we see it as a missed opportunity. Billions of dollars are going to be spent by one party or the other, basically, for example, uh, consolidating the pro-life gains, fighting this, you know, basically this idea of rights being stripped away. So all of this money, which could have been poured into all of the money that will be wasted in politics, that could go to funding space-based science research, it's a huge missed opportunity because there are countries, com competitors, who are laser focused on developing and exploiting the next generation of space-based technology. There are no cultural disputes. There's other countries that definitely have their own problems. For example, aberrant corruption, runaway corruption, theft, basically dark money. But relatively, it's not this country versus that country. We think all this, these political cultural disputes, it's a, it, it's a nonsense waste of resources, if it makes sense. So, and, and even from an atheistic standpoint, do atheists fear death? You look at the way stellar evolution, universe is created. Earth has had many uh, spawns of life where 99.9% .9 of the life was eliminated by natural major geological events. It could happen to humans, but it's a cyclical system. So the idea, science supports the idea that the idea that you're an individual atomic ind independent being, while you have your consciousness, but you're actually, in terms of quantum field, you, everything is connected to everything else. So there's really, just like the sun, is the sun dying? No, it's not. When the sun run out, runs out of fuel, it becomes what it peters away into a neutron star. Nothing really dies or is born. So if you want to get a little spiritual, science does tend to support this idea of things being a cycle and of a wheel of creation, destruction, maintenance, and preservation. In a, in a slightly, we tend towards more of a naturalistic perspective. So. 
by happenstance, certain dharmic views more or less coincide with what you see in science, but we, we are strictly taking an atheistic scientific approach.